Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an automation specialist with es &E. and in this video segment we will demonstrate how to animate some basic graphic elements inside Studio 5000 View Designer and how they work with the emulator. For our demonstration, we are going to be animating two push buttons, a simple indicator object, animating tank level, creating a numeric input to an adjust in a timer, creating a multi-state indicator for a tank state, adding simple navigation, and lastly, adding a PDF viewer object. The first object to add is a pre-built illuminated push button. Select the button from the toolbox and then drag and drop it onto the screen. Then resize the button and notice that it has green indicator lines that are similar to Microsoft Visio or PowerPoint to help visualize with sizing and spacing. Once the object is added, we will work on the properties found on the right hand side of the window. In the properties window, you get general, appearance, size and position, and security group options. These options are the same for all objects, but the properties inside of each group will vary based on the specific object. You should check all the properties because you may not need to add your own animations for some objects. Also, since all options are configurable, you may not find the specific object you are looking for, like a green push button, but you can always edit that property for the object. Since we added an illuminated push button, we simply need to add a tag for the light on property by creating a binding. A binding allows you to reference a tag or create an expression to modify the property from the PLC. We will add the binding and then search the PLC for the tags. View Designer has a PLC program added to its configuration, so the software is able to search the project file and pull all the tags without requiring you being online. Also, if you update the PLC file, the View Designer application will automatically pull the new tags when you reopen the HMI project. I want it to be a stop push button, so it will illuminate when my motor is running, which will be the motor underscore start underscore CMD tag. Additionally, we will leave the initial checkbox unchecked, which means the light will be off to start and it will turn on when the tag is true. The button is animated, but we need to make it do something, which requires adding an event. All buttons can be configured to be any style of button, momentary or maintained are examples. Events can be added on the events tab in the property window or by right clicking on the object and selecting button behavior. For this button, we will use a momentary style event with one on press and zero on release. One unique feature that is present if you have a 5510 or 2715 is the ability to assign it to a key or leave it as touch only. By default, it will always be touch only. And if you have a 5310 or 2713, this will not be an option. Then we will assign the tag motor manual stop push button by selecting the ellipses and browsing the PLC tags. Let's quickly make another push button for our start push button. We will copy and paste and then drag it in a line using the green indicator lines. If you highlight multiple objects, a group toolbar appears to allow you to group, space, and align the objects. When you copy and paste, it will copy all the tags and all the functions that you have already created. We will need to change the color under the appearance to green, as well as the tag for the illumination. The light on property will change by adding an expression when the tag is not true. Select the expression editor, which opens a new window where we will add the expression not equal to one. The expression is always being checked for syntax, so the box will turn red in the event that you have a syntax error. If you want to know the different options and their syntax, you can hit the question mark or press F1 key to launch the help menu. The help menu will launch the expression editor first, but you can type in the search bar expression examples. 
The expression example page shows all the syntax and examples on how to build the expressions. Once the expression is changed, we need to then change the event tag from the stop push button to the start push button. Moving to the next object in our list, we will build a simple indicator using a text display. The object will be used to notify us that we have entered webinar mode. Since we only want to be notified when we are in webinar mode, we will change the text to webinar mode, then we can animate the object. When creating animations, you can create a color table or state table. The color table is limited to color changes, whereas the state table has many more properties that can be configured, including color. On the animations tab, we will create a color table, select fill color and font color, then choose two states. Now we will add a binding tag, which will be webinar mode, and then select the button to open the table editor to make it a larger screen. For state zero, we will match the background color, but for state one, we will have it fill with blue and have a font color of white. Once that is done, click close, then we will resize our object to make it the same width using the green indicator lines. The next object to add is a bar graph to simulate a tank level. This can be more easily done with a tank object under the general equipment folder, but we can always add an image of your exact equipment, then use a bar graph. Once we add the bar graph, it always has a horizontal orientation. In order to make it vertical, we need to edit the angle property. We need to change the angle to 270 degrees so that the animation fills upward. This is because the angle property works in the clockwise direction. If we put 90, it would result in the animation filling downward. The other property we need to bind is the value to our tag tank level. The next item we will add to our screen is a numeric input to change the time delay after sensor one is no longer active. First, we will add a text box to label the input and then the label will be delay after sensor one. We will use a numeric input from common controls, select it and drag and drop the object on the screen. We will bind the value tag, which will show and edit the same tag. We need to search for the timer on instruction tag and then pick the preset tag. After the value is bound, we need to go to the numeric to configure how we will enter and view the value along with the min and max values allowed. Let's set the limits from zero to 60,000, which is 60 seconds. You could tag it to a variable also, instead of hard coding the value in the project itself. The next and very common object is a multi-state indicator, which we will create by using another text display. Instead of editing each property and creating separate animations, I'm going to select the state table on the animations page. State tables work best when you want to change multiple properties. The state table has every property of the object available to be changed in one location. So I recommend always using the table editor because it opens up a different window that can be resized to make it easier to see and manipulate. We will build a three state object for our tank status and use text, fill color, and font color. We will add the binding by selecting the three dots and finding the tag tank state. Since we have more than two states, we cannot use a Boolean tag. Then opening the expression editor, we will start with state zero as static for text with fill being gray and the font being black. Then state one is draining with red and white. And the last state two is filling green and white. Next, we want to create some simple navigation between screens, but we should align our objects and group them to make alignment easier. This is not a necessary step, but it is always good practice when creating screens. The next object will be a generic push button, which can be turned into a navigation button. To start, we will change the text to go to PDF. Now we will add an event to this button on the event tab by selecting 
touch press. Then add the command by selecting the drop down, picking navigation, then screen navigate. From there, you get a menu to pick from the navigation menu, user screens, or predefined screens, but we will select the user PDF screen. This could have also been accomplished using a button behavior, which shows the versatility of the buttons inside View Designer. The last object we will add to the PDF screen is a PDF viewer. There are two different methods for adding a PDF. The first method is the go to system and then select PDF object and drag and drop that on the screen. This opens a search document window that will show all the possible documents. Those documents can also be found under the assets in the project explorer. If the PDF doesn't exist yet, you can add it by right clicking on documents or you can add it by selecting browse to find the document. This method embeds a PDF into the application. If you want to scroll on the PDF, you are able to swipe up or down when you're in the emulator or when it is running on the screen. You can also dictate which page number you would like to load first or you can bind that to a tag. The other method is using the built-in add-on PDF viewer object. The PDF viewer is a little bit bigger but has a lot more functionality. It allows you to zoom in and out, change the size, and navigate by page or type in a page. The viewer has a property that also allows it to browse the assets in the Project Explorer to show all the potential documents that can be referenced. Now we have finished adding all of our objects. We should save our project and then verify the project. Verifying will let us know that we do not have any errors or warnings. Some examples could be having non-affiliated tags or improper tag types. Once the project is saved and verified, we can now emulate and test our screens. The emulator built into the View Designer software is an amazing tool that was well thought out and implemented. Since this project is configured for a 5510, the menu button will show in the emulator. If you have a 5310, this will not be there because it only comes on the 5510. If you select it, all the screens you had configured in the navigation menu will be shown in the pop-up window. With the emulator running, we can see live values from the PLC. Our indicator shows we are in webinar mode, and now we can press the start push button that is illuminated because the motor is not running. When we press the start push button, we now see the tank status and fill both animating. Also, we can edit the timer preset where we change it to 5000, which is five seconds. Next, we can use the button we created to navigate instead of the default navigation button. That will bring us to the PDF page where we can scroll and move around inside the document. To close the emulator, you simply need to hit the X in the top right corner of the screen. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact your local ESNE account manager or automation specialist.